Thank you so much for being here today and for the opportunity that you have given me to be part of your community for the next three months. Let me introduce myself. Before I became a professor at Mexico's National Autonomous University, UNAM, teaching preservation, policy, and business and marketing heritage courses, I was a regular archeologist who worked in the Maya region, mostly studying pottery. My interest in heritage studies derives from conducting an ethno-archeological project investigating pottery production in a rural community in Mexico. There, I faced the workings of economic growth and development policies in combating poverty levels on the heritage resources Mexico's government wants so much to preserve as part of its identity and that paradoxically compromised their preservation. The experience was profound. I watched ancient technologies rapidly transform into tourist commodities while people silently struggle to keep the social agency behind the technology they learned from their mothers and fathers. We can find another time to discuss this project if you are interested. Therefore, my talk today is about my latest project, Mexico Alternativo. It is a project using digital technologies to preserve people's heritage in Mexico City and its surrounding, mainly using a mobile application for iOS and Android devices, a website and social media platforms. The project responds to Mexico City's inhabitants demand to preserve their heritage, which contradicts national values as it emerges in a contemporary urban context. During my talk, I would like to discuss why empowering people's heritage values is important and why have we chosen digital technologies and social media to support their claim. I can anticipate the answer and probably you can leave. <laughs> if we do not move beyond institutional definitions of heritage, promoting social sustainability, peace and security in communities where wild, will be hard. Therefore, effective preservation requires acknowledging that people, not only experts and practitioners, must actively participate in heritage definition and management. Mexico Alternativo is not only a digital heritage project. It analyzes the effects of economic growth and development in reducing poverty to turn Mexico into a competitive economy. It measures the efficacy of the national heritage preservation model, concentrating exclusively on national and institutional values discusses the pertinence of using digital technologies to promote heritage resources in low-income countries and introduces new approaches to heritage courses to prepare students for the applied sector, not only for academia. These goals organize my talk today. Nations worldwide have adopted economic growth and development to increase their GDP and combat poverty, requiring the promotion of infrastructure building and the production of goods and services to create an urban environment where a rich diversity of people come together. More than one half of the world's population lives in urban areas, according to United Nations in 2019. Through UNESCO, the UN promotes an urban life for all in Mexico, even if it means deforesting its jungles, one of America's main longs to accommodate large infrastructure projects. Nonetheless, building infrastructure capacity has created spaces that enable new ways of life for its citizens. The spaces have been appropriated over time in which events have taken place and are now part of the culture and history. Cities in Latin America face constant urbanization to support economic growth and development of which Mexico City is an example. When further infrastructure building pressures novel cultural resources, people are on the streets demanding their preservation. Why? The urban environment gives its citizens a sense of belonging. Unfortunately, Mexico's heritage stewards see no reason to protect these modern resources from new infrastructure building to create goods and services. Mexico's heritage stewards have set aside significant changes introduced to heritage management processes worldwide, which have extended heritage values beyond monumentality and have introduced methodologies to build a strong relationship with communities. Mexico is behind many countries in adopting an understanding of heritage as a product and process, providing societies with a wealth of resources inherited from the past created in the present and bestowed for future generations as suggested by UNESCO in 2014. 
Adopting this definition requires a management process that constantly revises and updates concepts of heritage and to maintain its sense, meaning, and functioning in the future. Inspired by the outcomes of the French Revolution, the National Institute of Anthropology and History, INA, the steward of Mexico's heritage, still practice the exclusive preservation of archaeological, artistic, and historical monuments of relevance to the history of the nation. The federal law on archaeological, artistic, and historical monuments and zones defines archaeological monuments as everything tangible produced by those cultures who lived in Mexico before the Spanish Spanish conquest in the 16th century, including human remains, flora, and fauna. Ina considers historical monuments, those movable and immovable properties, relevant to the nation's history from the 16th to the 19th centuries. Beyond the 20th century, only the work of a deceased artist exhibiting relevant aesthetic value is protected. Mexico's heritage management is one of the few left worldwide still preserving time-bounded resources within a hierarchical classification, considering archaeological monuments at the top of the list and excluding material or immaterial witnesses of Mexico's modern history. Therefore, citizens continuously challenge the national heritage definition and its management model in the streets. On the 50th anniversary of the massacre of an unknown number of students at Tlatelolco, the government declared the events that happened there as intangible heritage. Let me share what happened on October 2, 1968, shy of Mexico celebrating the Olympic Games, warning you about the sensitivity of the images you are about to see, and for you to understand the mobilization that took place. Todorov's extensive work, I argue that the Mexican government has established a policy of memory, abusing monuments and definitions of heritage for political gain, as the declaration was made shortly before the presidential elections. If the government thought the declaration of the students' massacre as intangible heritage would be more effective than the previously used strategies to conceal the truth, which included the destruction and concealment of print and visual documentation, the imprisonment, disappearance, and murder of opponents and journalists, in that case, its actions have set the ground for the emergence of a countercultural conception of heritage to achieve social justice, as what had happened at La Telolco will never be forgotten. On October 2, 2018, citizens launched to the streets and placed an anti monument between Mexico City's cathedral and the seat of governments commemorating their version of what happened at La Telolco. Placing anti-monuments around Mexico City sends a strong message to the government to construct a national truth surrounding the violent events that have overtaken Mexico for the last two decades. These anti-monuments demonstrate that the selection of facts or material witnesses to construct a national truth about what happened to their loved ones is not accepted. Lessons of public unrest lead to the realization that after a century of infrastructure building and promoting urban lifeways for Mexico to become a developed country, urban spaces have created a sense of place attachment among its dwellers. Mexico citizens demand the protection of their noble heritage resources. This alternative Mexico reminds us that cultural heritage is more than an object or a monument giving us aesthetic pleasure. Heritage, as described by Laura Jane Smith, is a dynamic and social process. And for it to promote social cohesion, peace, and security as idealized by UNESCO, it requires acknowledgement that people, not only experts, as I said at the beginning, have to be active participants in heritage definition and management. However, such an acknowledgement requires a structural change in our thinking about heritage, its management, and policy. For me, that change begins in the classroom, which is the cradle Mexico Alternativo, a project promoting an object-oriented democracy, in the same terms proposed by Latour back in 2005 which binds us, all of us, in a public space profoundly different from what is usually recognized by the political agenda. Mexico Alternativo, as mentioned earlier, is a project using digital technologies to preserve people's heritage in Mexico City and its surroundings, mainly using a free mobile application for iOS and Android devices, a website and social media platforms, mainly Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and most recently, TikTok. Developing apps to promote culture and artistic works is a common strategy for museums and heritage practitioners worldwide. 
How we build its content makes us different from all these projects. By building a strategic alliance with the public as part of a value chain teaching research transfer at the BA level, we have designed a methodology whose strategies to connect with society emerge from CRM, a heritage industry contributing almost a billion dollars to US GDP, produced by 1350 companies, employing 30% of professional archaeologists, according to Dorr and Atkinson in 2022. I detail its modus operandi in Dr. Ezra Gildi's classroom a couple of weeks back, in which I stress what Dorr and Atkinson are saying, we do not have a job problem, we have a career problem. So let me explain our methodology. Students participating in my BA heritage courses recover heritage resources relevant to Mexico City citizens, not only to heritage institutions. We operate under a heritage definition considering resources regardless of age, location, and without priority scales. Resources are defined based on what heritage means to society. For the final paper with different degrees of difficulty depending on their semester, students use Google Maps or any other free software to identify heritage resources within their vicinity by covering 1K in diameter with their home as the starting point. They use the app to locate these resources most of them are really of the national value, or by writing down the address and later extracting their coordinates with Google Maps. Students also interview their neighbors to identify their meaningful resources, expressing values of significance such as feelings of association. The interview includes simple questions, even referencing what would happen if a resource was to disappear. Students also recover the area's history by researching in library and archives. Given the scarce academic publication about people's modern heritage resources, students also rely on social media and their data is later verified by students in advanced courses. With these strat strategies, Alternative Mexico partners with the disempowered citizen without technical skills or owning a smartphone but wishes to share. Students in advanced courses learn how to use spatial statistics, obtain a stratified sample, and randomly select their neighbors to enhance representativity in their recovered data. This is a consultation strategy that can also be used during policy making or preparing a land use plan. Citizens report significant events and activities and even share the accomplishments of relevant community members. These photographs that you're about to see displaying an apartment compound complex and a busy street near Mexico's airport are full of history and memories. Dwellers remember this land was not only occupied by the manor of Balbuena in the early 20th century, also that it was owned by the Braniff family, an American-Mexican family who founded Braniff International Airways. All members of the community narrated Alberto Braniff took off on his plane as part of the centennial celebrations of Mexico's independence and his flight initiated Mexico's aviation history in 1910. Architect Mario Pani designed the John F. Kennedy apartment complex that you see in this photograph. President Kennedy inaugurated the complex during his visit to Mexico in 1962. We have recovered testimonies of those that leave that moment of the warmest reception ever expressed to a head of state by the Mexican people as an incalculable crowd covered the 20 kilometers between the airport and Mexico's presidential home. Maybe John Paul II, whom they remember passing through the street, received a similar welcome. We know the limitations of sharing knowledge using information and communication technologies, ICTs. In an emerging economy such as Mexico, where poverty levels have reached 80% and of the generation gap is using ICT. Despite the United Nations efforts, mainly through UNESCO, the Information for All program established in 2001 to build inclusive and sustainable knowledge societies has had limited success. It did not foster universal access to information and knowledge for roughly half of the world's population in 2021, that is 4.9 billion people, used the internet in 2021, most located in developing countries. I argue that information, communication, and technologies, ICTs, have deepened economic differences worldwide and reinforced the gap between developed and underdeveloped nations. To disseminate or preserve heritage resourcing using ICTs, you must understand whom you are reaching through a website, social media, or mobile technologies. Otherwise, you will find yourself like Mark Zuckerberg, 
a few months back, apologizing for his missteps, leading to a 70% fallout of Meta stocks and laying off thousands of his employees. To overcome the digital divide, students take the voice of the disempowered citizen to digital space by publishing their heritage resources through our app, website, and social media. Mexico Alternativo also acknowledges that access to digital technologies is distributed unevenly worldwide and that there is a generation gap in its use. Therefore, who is our user? Those with the economic potential to do so have basic digital and literacy skills and language literacy in English, given that most contents are rep reproduced in that language. The Lloyd Global has kept a pulse on the attitude of internet users and the key events and trends affecting them. Thus, it is an excellent source of information to know about those using the internet and their preferred choices of technology. Mexico Alternativo has adapted its technological products considering the generational market. Let me introduce you who is partnering with Mexico Alternativo. Nearly 70% of those connected to the internet in Mexico are millennials a young generation under 35, fitting well with the age distribution of internet users worldwide. Millennials are the first truly digital online generation. Millennials believe businesses are both responsible for improving society and driving change, so we are fortunate to have. Given that by 2025, millennials will make up 75% of the global workforce, even taking leadership decisions, organizations must recognize their needs. Millennials are also more likely to push back against employers who ask them to perform tasks that conflict with their values and ethics. Millennials are not necessarily optimistic. They believe society has reached a point of no return and that it's too late to repair the damage caused by climate change. Millennials prefer to see the world than buy homes or have children. They shop with their phones, have groceries delivered to the doors, and use ride shares. Gen Z's, or Centennials, is a cohort between 14 and 19 years of age. This generation is engaged with social issues and current events through news alerts and social media feed that they access through their mobile devices. They prefer user-generated content formats and visual and video-focused social media platforms to follow and connect with like-minded content people who often share news and information about issues they care about. Since this generation lives paycheck to paycheck, paid streaming services are not an option. Just think about what Elon Musk is facing right now with Twitter. Playing video games helps them stay connected to other people and distracts them from difficult times. They like to create a game character or avatar to express themselves. Most Gen Z's are making at least some effort to reduce their environmental impact. Unfortunately, Gen Z's are regularly stressed and anxious. Therefore, they are ready to leave their jobs within two years and prefer a hybrid or remote working pattern. For businesses, retaining them is challenging, and for us too. Generation Alpha was born in 2010 and has yet to be fully profiled. The Alphas are known as Generation Glass, the I Generation, or the Global Generation. Alphas are technologically literate, digitally connected, and skill creators. The cohort was born into a rapidly changing world, and their lives thus far have been defined by the ubiquity of increasingly mobile, responsive, and personalized technology. Therefore, classroom experiences must shift their focus from content mastery to meaningful, relevant skills-based experiences that allow alphas to innovate and share what they know. This generation requires active learning, a student-led hat-ons process with seamlessly integrated tools and technologies that will necessitate a change in the design of classroom environments. Alphas are often the children of millennials and the siblings of Generation C. They are expected to be the most racially and ethnically diverse generation yet and the most formally educated, digitally literate, longest living, and globally connected. Alphas have been connected to and engaged with mobile technology since birth. Their generation began the same year the iPad hit the consumer market, and the word app was the American Dialect Society's word of the year. Generation Alpha was predicted to continue with Generation Z's engagement in social activism. So to effectively reach these generations, representing 70% of internet users, you probably have to reconsider if the web 1.0 format is attractive to them. Mexico's National Museum of Anthropology promotes an online catalog for users to visualize an object through a high-resolution photograph and 
to read a brief description. Using a Web 1.0 format based on hyperlinks and text to disseminate information to communicate with highly interactive and purpose-driven generations who think outside the box and are looking to replace outdated models is probably not your best option. These generations are challenging us to create value from heritage through innovation and engagement to serve society, science, and nature. According to the Lloyd's profiling, these generations are transforming your organization's culture right now. Not only because they are tech savvy and on Facebook and Twitter, but because they are on a mission. The National Museum of Anthropology provides a monolithic view of its collection and Mexico's heritage to an audiovisual and interactive generation. So to connect with 75% of internet users, you must move to the web 2.0. And museums think it's very easy just to open a Facebook account. However, moving into the web 2.0 requires a larger budget and structural change to how current narratives are offered. Since we must think outside the box, websites must become places where users learn and develop emotions to care for our culture and heritage. The user wants to use text to enrich them and jointly produce new content. It requires moving away from a publishing information platform to one that promotes communication by different tools such as blogs, media content upload, social networking sites, a platform that allows tagging and of course like buttons. For a country of 130 million people, one realizes that not even Facebook is attracting, attracting Mexican followers. Mexico stewards educate Mexican society, even on Facebook, about their national heritage by reproducing inanimate objects, representing Mexico's official discourse of the past. Most likely, this explains why Selena Gomez has over 89 million followers and the National Museum for 150,000 followers. Therefore, democratizing knowledge is more than digitizing analog resources and offering them on a website. We have kept Web 1.0 to connect with an older population because not even young Mexicans embrace a full transition to the Web 2.0 or 3.0 for lack of exposure to technological advances. They are afraid. The old generation user follows us on Facebook. So using the most sophisticated and intelligent technology there is, will not guarantee a transition to the social web. Moving to a web 2.0 format is prohibitively and economically uh, expensive for the Mexican government unless it changes its business model. Furthermore, the principles behind web 2.0 contradicts Mexico's cultural and heritage legislation. There are several projects out there offering user experience content. For example, your project, Land Walls of Istanbul, which included an app. I don't know what happened to the app, but it included an app <laughs> and was looking for answers similar to ours and is part of why, um, the many reasons why I am spending my sabbatical with you. Land Walls of Istanbul was also interested in identifying how different communities give meanings to major heritage sites and what happens when such meanings are intertwined with histories of conflict and marginalization or are not recognized in official, in official heritage interpretation. Mexico Alternativo has tried to move to a 3.0 format towards the semantic network, enabling a 360 VR platform to improve the user experience, the UX, with these developments, IX, on YouTube. However, Silicon Valley stopped its research offering accessible and free 360 VR tools during the pandemic. Offering a 3.0 format is costly, and not everyone easily accepts living in a virtual world. Again, as Zuckerberg, who moved too quickly into the avatar world. We have also modified our expectations of moving into a 3.0 format by offering default navigation routes or ewoks, which I am developing during my sabbatical here at Bilgi. And I don't want to move too much our setting, but if you go to our webpage, you can, um, you can see the routes that we are creating, and it's really on the works, but um, you can actually, like, if there's a site that has uh, already um, scanned its interior, you can actually get in and just visit that museum or whatever, whatever resource there is. So after giving you this background, you might be wondering, why we developed an app to promote heritage resources. Mobile penetration has reached 81 million people in Mexico, representing 73.6% of the population of six years or more, which explains our choice of technology. The user moving around Mexico City and its surroundings can visit those new resources directly using the app and engage with them through a photograph and a brief description 
linked to our website for further information. In brief, we will offer the e-routes, mostly for the new generations, which you can make if you're in Turkey with or without the app. Furthermore, the application allows the user to add a new resource located on a map and include a photograph and a description in terms of its meaning and relevance by asking a few questions and accepting our terms of reference. So let's see how it works. Ativo is a project to transform the digital space into a place of social and cultural negotiation. Albeit its modest technology and reach, it promotes a collaborative relationship with the public to create a repository of social memory for the people and by the people, who are teaching us that inequalities between the developed and developing world are real. Their voices demonstrate there is more to reproduce through our websites, resources with lasting value and significance and unique ex that are also unique expressions of human knowledge, as many masterpieces housed at museums worldwide. Thus, I would like to conclude that thinking forward in digital technologies is not about state-of-the-art technology, but about integrating all members and voices and promoting new forms of solidarity in generating knowledge, for it is the only way to foster the de democratization of knowledge. Finally, I would like to thank the following institutions for their support and invite you to download our app and join our social media. Your support translates into student grants and further financing. So thank you very much.